these constant portrayals of who we are as a people and these dictations of what is beautiful, of what is true love. Um, and, and now we get to the next images, right? As young little Nicantlaca girls or little boys, I mean, little boys are not even less, you know, represented in positive light either. Um, you start making certain decisions about your image, right? We get, you know what, maybe I should dye my hair blonde, Jessica Alba. Um, maybe I should dye my hair blonde and, you know, make a profit out of trying to look white, Paulina Rubio. Um, or let me just, you know, go home and watch novelas. And we all know novelas. It's always the blonde, poor girl who doesn't know she inherited millions. And her, um, her nana is a full-blood indigenous woman who's raised all her life. She gets a little bit of, the, you know, the money. And it's just, just recycled racist notions. And then when we do have a, a female, we have La Chupito. Some of you guys have heard her. She's a, a Mexican woman who goes around drunk. And that's the way she's made a, you know, a profit no, out of. No tea. no tea, thank you. No tea. She's drunk all the time, and she, you know, she's slurring. So, but then you get a, the white, whiter version or a bleach blonde Mexican on there, and obviously there's more sophistication in her speech and her appearance in her dialogue. So this racism here, we're constantly learning. I mean, this is not new to you guys. You've all seen it. You've all um, probably been victims of it as as we have in our childhood or see it every day in our children in high schools, it's out there. Um, I was trying to look for a positive image of, um, of a Nicantlaca person. It was really hard to find one, so this is all I came up with. So, <laughs> so um, we have a lot of work to do as far as uh, the media goes. So um, I love Dora. But um, so anyway, so one of the things that, that we are talking about, I mean, we're looking at the media, we're looking at, at negative portrayals of indigenous women, um, is this whole issue of our, learning our identity, of learning our history and our culture. When you start learning your history as a Nicantlaca person, female, male, you know, these things here, they're going to they're gonna pop out to you and you're going to be like, wait a second. Why do I want to do that to myself? Why do I want to keep promoting this? Why do I want to support Disney? Um, but that all starts with the knowledge of self. That starts with you, you know, having that thirst to learn more of your history, learn more of your culture. And so, and hopefully with that, I mean, I know these are pretty old um, statues, but what we're here to talk about is the future of our people. You know, we need to get rid of this, replace it with some of this, and be more creative. And as far as media representation, as far as um, how we're presenting our culture to the world, and, you know, stop allowing people to dictate, you know, like um, El Yolo was talking about earlier, our identity, Hispanic, Latino, raza, mestizo, um, you know, that we're told as women, and one of the things that, I want to share with you is, you know, the positive views that we're, we're, we're given by the media, not only that, the education system. Um, for example, the term Chicana feminism um, has, you know, originally when it started, and that's another aspect that we were um, influenced with, it was positive, you know, it was about being a brown woman, it was about, um, you know, being rejected by the white feminist movement, and you're saying, you know what, let's just start our own group. And that was a positive thing, because you're talking about Chicana feminism. But what we have now, we have, um, and if you see in the handout, I'm going to, um, on the back part, if you guys have it, pretty much um, on there, we have an essay on the Mexica Movement website, and it's an essay, and at the end of the essay, it gives you all the quotes. And so some of the things that, that we come across in the Mexica Movement is when we come across, you know, some of the sisters, they're like, well, you know, well, what, how do they treat their women or, you know, because I read on Saldua and she said stuff like, how many of you are familiar, first of all, with Gloria Saldua? Anybody? Okay. All right, Gloria Saldua, she's a very famous Chicana uh, author. Um, she's seen as one of the pioneers of Chicana feminism. And one of the things that, you know, educated Nicantlaca women come across, at the, especially at the uh, university level, are Chicana women, or you know, now they're called Latina, they don't no longer call themselves Chicana. Uh, these women are writing a lot of books, and they're going around reinterpreting what it is to be Mexica, what it is to be indigenous. And um, one of the things that, that for example, Gloria Saldua stated, and I, I welcome you guys to, to read um, some of her quotes, like I said, they're on the website. 
And this is just to kind of um, give you an idea of what she's about. And she said, not me sold out my people, but they me. Um, for, for 300 years, she has been a slave, a forced cheap labor, colonized by the Spaniard, by her own people. Um, end quote. That's just an example. That's Lorena Saldua. Um, one more example I want to give you is Ana Castillo. She's a little bit more tricky because she, um, she talks about being indigenous woman. She talks about um, uh, being proud of being brown. But when you read her overall work, for example, she has a statement where she says, I certainly would not argue that the Mexica male's dominance was less oppressive of women than that imposed by the Spaniards. There is little point in debating which is lesser of the evils. So if you kind of remember what I talked about the Mexica culture, where we have women priestess, teachers, educators, um, and then you read something like that, now that you kind of have that background awareness, it's easier for you to point that out. But if you're a, a teenage Nicantlaca girl, or you're, it's your first year in college, and you're reading these books that are being heavily promoted at the university level, you're going to say, you know what? She's Mexican. She's, she's bringing up these conclusions. So it must be true. You know? So what happens is that you're discouraged from learning your history. You're discouraged from trying to even figure out what the Mexica women or Mayan women were about. And so at that point, that's where it becomes a disservice to our people. It becomes a disservice to even yourself because you're trying to further a knowledge that has been completely kept away from you through your K through 12 knowledge education. And so at this point, you're trying to learn who you are. You pick up a book of a, a woman that's of Nicantlaca descent. You read stuff like that, you're going to just throw it back and keep on going, you know? So those are one of the things that we have to be, you know, keep in mind and not to discredit all of the Chicano writers. These, um, we like to confront the very specific ones because they're the ones that kind of have set this tone for that type of philosophy and for that type of movement. But overall, it's just to be inviting, you know, into all of us to take on this research, all of us who say, you know what, we need to filter these European lies, these, this Eurocentricity from which, you know, our knowledge pretty much comes from. It's that foundation of Eurocentricity that hasn't been dismantled yet. And so, like Neliolo was talking about, in the Mexica movement, we're trying to do that. Like, for example, we have this banner here um, that we take at marches. It was there for the last march in um, April, no, I'm sorry, March 26 it was. Um, we have the yeah, Anahuac map, and a lot of people are not used to seeing a, a so-called United States without all the borders, but that's how we see this land. And then we have, um, you know, examples of the genocide. We have uh, the Mexica flag. So in everything that we're doing as members and supporters of the organization is to try to find, you know, all ways that we can that whatever is interesting to us to be able to dismantle this colonialism and to help promote the idea of being Nicantlaca, of not apologizing for being who you are, of embracing who you are, and of not being afraid to, to say, you know what, this is my land. You know, I'm beautiful. Um, I'm on my own land. I'm eating my own food. Um, I ain't going to go nowhere. You know, so and that type of confidence is lacking in our communities, and we see that every day, and uh, we see that in gang violence, we see that in teenage pregnancies, we see that in the college dropout rate. I mean, this the psychology that goes behind colonialism is very detrimental to our health as a people, and we see that every day. So one of the things that in the Mexica movement, what we're trying to do is bring in an alternative and saying, you know what, the answer to these problems that we're suffering as a people is to know who you are. That's essential to the Jew, that's essential to the Turk, that's essential to the Chinese, the Japanese. You know, it's essential to who you are as a person. Without a strong foundation of who you are, I mean, you're going to just go with the wind.